Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a little look in depth into the GSX editor on Microsoft Flight Simulator. So a little bit of a tutorial in a way. I hope you guys found it really useful. If you do, share your thoughts, your tips and tricks in the comments below. Make sure you hit subscribe and give the video a like as well. When you spawn in and you uh, connect to GSX, you might want to perhaps configure an entire airport and then upload that to flightsim.to for the community to share if there's one not already available. Or indeed, you might want to make a, just a couple of tweaks and changes to your favourite airport and your favourite strand uh, that you want to use in the sim for flights uh, arriving or departing. And I'm going to show you how to do that with ease. You of course need to make sure you've got the, um, the actual manual available for GSX, but if not, you can grab a pen and paper and I'll give you guys the shortcut commands if you like, uh, explaining how to use it all. So you go into your GSX menu in the sim and you drop down UI and then you can click customize parking position or GSX settings and from there you want to click customize parking position and it'll open up the editor like so this is one that I've already configured I've moved the stands uh, around a little bit I've moved the aircraft positioning and I've added the marshaller uh, and made quite a number of tweaks to the locations and the positions of all the ground equipment. Now, moving forwards, you're going to want to know how to move between different stands if you're doing a whole airport. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the numpad to either go to the next parking position or the previous parking position. So in this instance, we're going to skip to the next one. We'll configure it from scratch and I'm going to use numpad 9. If I wanted to go back to the previous parking, it would be number 7. So numpad 9 zooms us across to stand 6 and uh, I can hit the space bar just to re-center the drone camera on the horizon and look how messed up this one is. It's wildly off the uh, the actual parking space uh, by quite some bit. So first thing is we're going to just move the aeroplane. To do that all we are going to do is press and hold the shift button and then we're going to use the arrows on the keypad to move the aeroplane around. So you can do this with whichever aircraft uh, you like to use the most. And we're going to navigate that all the way to the relevant stop bar. And you can see this one that's actually got painted on it. 737, there's a little ghost stop bar for that there. So we could use that, but I'm just going to use the main one instead uh, in this instance. You can move the drone camera around as you would normally. And if you release the shift button, it will give you smaller increments of movement, left, right, center, and about so that you can move that nose wheel nice and easy. You can then see an orange circle around the aeroplane. Now that is the size of the, pa uh, the stand. To increase or decrease it, you want to use F5 or F6. We're going to use F6. We're going to increase the size of the parking space until we're near to the st pretty much the wingspan of the aircraft, roughly. And that's going to give us a nice big parking space for us to use on the aeroplane. We're going to use the keypads F1 and F4 and that's going to allow us to move between each object on the stand. So I'm going to use F4 to move forwards to the marshaller who's all the way over there in a terrible position. So press and hold shift and we're going to use the arrow keys to reposition the marshaller to a better location at the head of the stand to assist us with parking the aeroplane properly like so F4 for the next one and it's going to be the tug who's all the way over here press F4 and the next one is going to be the stop bar and we need to move the aeroplane again to the stop bar of the stand press and hold shift using your numpads your arrows on your keyboard, sorry, to move the aeroplane to the correct location. Release shift for those smaller adjustments. And when you're happy, we can press F4 and move to the next object, which should be the tug. So again, press and hold shift. We can make some quicker movements to the road area, and we want to rotate it. For that, you can use your numpad, either 1 or 3 to rotate small increments, or we can use F7 
or F8 to move it in much faster increments and then we can use the arrows to reposition the tug to where we want it somewhere perhaps around here because we don't want to block things like the zebra crossing which is where the passengers are going to be walking behind when we do that in a few moments Pressing F4 is then going to take us to the ground equipment and you can see here on the editor it's telling us what is next, the baggage train front. And it's highlighted in orange. We want to move that to the correct side of the aeroplane too. So we can use the pay where scenery to our advantage. We can park it all the way out of view, out of the way here. And in fact in this scenery we can rotate it and go and park it inside the scenery like so, so it's even more hidden. Next one, the rear cargo section, we can park that on the edge of the stand. Pressing F4 it's then going to ask us to do the main cargo train. I'm going to place it somewhere around that location there for those cargo aircraft that might be in use. We've then got the baggage loaders and basically we're going to work through all of these until we're satisfied that we've got everything configured as we like. And every single stand can look slightly differently because in reality all of the ground staff will line up slightly differently as well. When I do it I tend to like sort of follow a common theme and I kind of try and park them as they would at Heathrow along the heads and the edges of the stands. Uh, and then we move on to... The stairs at the rear of the aeroplane so you never see them on a stand right at the very base as aircraft are turning in because it's a hazard in reality so what we'll do is we'll move them all the way to the front of the stand out of the way f7 and f8 to rotate around nice and quick snaps and what it will do is when it's cooled it will navigate around the cone that will be under the wing over to the rear stairs. That's a nice position, so let's commit to that. Mid stairs for those larger aircraft. It's invisible here because we don't have any. Set it somewhere you're happy with, and then we can move through to the stairs front. And this is the last object placement now. That'll do. Press F4, and it's returned the aeroplane. Um, to the standard section of the parking editor and that is it we can uh, press 9 again to go to the next stand when we're happy we can press enter and commit to it exiting from editing mode like so now once you've exited the editor mode it's going to bring you back to this menu here which is what we referred to earlier you're going to click through the GSX menu and you're going to click customize parking if you want to change between things like the safe docks and everything else, when you're in the editor and you're looking at the marshaller and you've got the marshaller selected, you can press F2 or F3 and that will cycle between marshaller or safe dock and it will allow you to select through all of these different options here for your parking system. But Bristol predominantly has marshallers, we just stick with that for the time being. And again you can choose whether or not parking has a jetway as well. We're going to want to look at customised walker waypoints to allow the passengers to get to the aircraft in a fairly realistic fashion. So we're going to select this option now. It gives you the pop-up with a reminder of the different options uh, and they're pretty much similar to uh, the passengers as well. But there's a couple of tweaks that we're going to mention uh, increasing ob object height and decreasing object height using Z and Q. They're they're potentially going to be really Entering important. Please wait. So we're going to enable that. And we're back in the editor. And uh, as you can see, the ground equipment that we've placed around the stand has actually remembered the locations of them all as well, which is looking pretty cool. But there's a passenger waypoint there, number one. Now that's not very good. We want it to be just underneath that uh, walkway, if you like. So same as before, using the arrows, using the shift key, we can move all of that back here. Do 
towards the gates, uh, gate number six. And you can see we're going underneath the ramp there and it's becoming obscured. So let's position it laterally first, get it nicely in position. We could even go inside and we can press and hold Q to raise the passenger waypoint until we can see the one appear. Now, of course, we're not going to just commit to that because it's only one waypoint. The passengers will go from there to the plane. We need to add more waypoints. We press F6. And you might have to look for it, but we can see all the way over there, bizarrely, we've got a waypoint. So let's bring it over. We can have a look, make sure we've got the height nice and correct, so we can press Z to lower the height until it disappears. We can check it there like so. So that looks pretty good. And again, to cycle between, all we've got to do is we press F1 and F4. F6 is going to give us another waypoint. It's starting to bring them a bit closer for us now. What we can do is move the drone camera around, autofocus is now enabled because of a clash in keybinds and we can then lower the height down to the ground level till it disappears then bring it up slightly F6 again and you can see it's disappeared once more so we've got to have a little look around and there it is we can find it again F6 Adds a new waypoint. Like so. And again, you just want to make sure that it's at the correct height. Now, we don't want to connect this waypoint straight to the aeroplane, i.e. we don't want to then link it and add another one further down towards the doors because what it will do if we commit to it here is allow the uh, passengers at this point to move up towards the stairs uh, and board. So it kind of connects it automatically anyway. Um, if you wanted to, you can cr basically change the color variations between some of the automatic stanchions and things that get placed, or you can just leave it as it is like so, and the passengers will just walk out when you're happy. Exiting from editing mode, please Hit enter. Leave. And again, if you're customizing the entire scenery, you'll have to do this for every single stand in use. You might have to change some of the categories for between ramp GA medium, small and large to allow certain aircraft to come in and be used. Uh, and in here, you can change the pushback systems and actually, if you want to, create a custom um, pushback slot as well, which is all very quite cool. Once you've, once you've returned to the menu where it stands six, you can go ahead and change some more options. You can add quick edit and customize a uh, more accurate pushback option for people to use. If you're editing an entire scenery, you can, you'd can you have to do, unfortunately, every single option in here, every single stand. Um, but you can fiddle around and change all of these settings as well. If you make some mistakes, you can just disable the passenger walking points. Uh, with ease as well. Once you're happy, you can go ahead and request boarding and you can put it all to the test. Boarding requested. You might find when you exit the editor and the aircraft moves slightly that actually it's off the spot and you then you just have to simply uh, go back into the editor mode and have another little go, another little tweak. Uh, I've just left it to automatically assign a handling agent at the moment but you can see if we go over to the other side of the aeroplane here that all of our ground vehicles on the cargo side are moving from our prescribed positions and they're all able to interact with the aircraft and the stairs have moved behind and around the wing to remain clear whilst the steps are in place. The animations for the passengers have begun already as well which is good because it's allowing us to see the route that they're going to take for boarding or deboarding. And effectively, we just have to wait to see what happens, allow the boarding to commence as a bit of a test 
um, and then just tweak and go from there. But in short, that is it. Is coming. Hopefully you guys have found the video useful. Share your thoughts, your tips and tricks in the comments below. Be sure to hit subscribe. Don't forget to click like and I'll see you very soon for a live stream in the near future. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.